Hello everyone. Welcome to the ninth lesson video, which is on triangles. <clears throat> triangles uh, are one of the favorite GRE topics, and you will definitely see a few triangle questions on your exam. Um, the first part of this lesson is on general properties of triangles. All right, so let's get started with that. So a triangle, I guess you all are familiar with, is your three-sided uh, polygon, which has, well, three sides and three angles. So, so this is my way of uh, actually writing the different things on the triangle. So, so the angles, I'll talk as angle A. So at this vertex, you have angle A. At this vertex, you have angle B. So angle, sorry about that. So at this vertex, you have angle A. This is your angle B and this is angle C. And the sides are the, the small letter uh, letter things, so A, B, and C. Right. So the first property that you really need to know is that the angles inside a triangle, so here our inside angles are angle A. This is my sign for, uh, for representing an angle. So angle A, angle B, angle C. These are the three angles inside your triangle right they always sum up to 180 degrees okay so this is a very important very very important fact that you probably most of you already know okay so you need to memorize All right um, next let's look at the types of triangles there are some special types that we we need to be familiar with the first um, type is based on sides okay so so there are two particular types um, based on sides that you need to know. The first is where you have two sides that are equal. So this is your first one. You have two sides equal. So, so let's say here side A, the small letter A, and side C are equal. These single dashes are one way to represent equality. So this means that the side A and side C are equal. So A is equal to C. So this is a type of triangle that's known as isosceles or isosceles, uh, either way is fine. Uh, so, so your sides are equal and also your angles are equal that are opposite to these equal sides. So angle A and angle C are equal. This will also talk about a bit later when two sides are equal, the angles opposite to them are also equal. Okay, so that's your isosceles triangle. Uh, next is your equilateral triangle where all the three sides are equal. So side A, side C, side B, all the three sides are equal. So A is equal to B is equal to C. And as a corollary, all the angles are also equal. So angle A is equal to angle B is equal to angle C. And since all the angles sum up to 180, it means each of these angles have to be equal to 60. So you have 60 degrees, 60 degrees, 60 degrees inside an equilateral triangle. Okay. Uh, there's another triangle called scaling where nothing is equal, no angles, no, uh, no sides, but you don't really need to remember that thing. Okay. Next is the classification based on angles. Okay. So the earlier one was based on sides, this is based on angles. Uh, so the first one, is a right angle triangle. So in a right angle triangle, one of your angles is 90 degrees. So the square, as you know, represents 90 degrees. So here, angle A is 90 degrees. And right angle triangles have many interesting properties, uh, which we will cover in the next uh, part of this lesson. But one other property that you should know at this point is that since angle A is 90, then angle C and angle B should sum up to 90. This is again going by this sum of all angles has to be 180 inside the triangle. And both angles C and B are acute angles, meaning they are less than 90, which is obvious. All right, next uh, classification based on angle is op there's an obtuse angle triangle. This classification you really don't need to know, but still will cover it. So, so an obtuse angle triangle, one of your angle is an obtuse angle. And, and if you remember, obtuse angles are greater than 90 but less than 180. So here angle A, which is probably less than, which is, well, it has to be less than 180, but it's greater than 
90. So this is your angle A is the obtuse angle. Okay. <coughs> All right. Moving on, let's look at more of the general properties of triangles. <coughs> Again, I have my usual triangle that's been labeled. So I like to label that. Um, the first property is known as a triangle inequality property. You don't need to remember this name, but just putting it down. Triangle inequality. So this inequality says that in any triangle, the sum of two lengths, so, so let's pick two, two sides, so A and B, the sum of the lengths of side A and B has to be greater than the third side, the length of the third side. <clears throat> Simple. So pick any two sides, the sum of that has to be greater than the length of the third side. Okay. Um, in, maybe I'll write this down in words also. So sum of length of two sides is always greater than the length of the third side. Okay. Uh, and if this law, this is basically a law, if this law is not followed, you can't have a triangle. So this is a very important fact that's, that's tested on GI frequently and we'll do some example problems. If, if this is not followed, then you can't have a triangle. And I can write this for any, any, any combination of sides. So I can also have A plus C has to be greater than B. Also B plus C has to be greater than A, right? So all the three combinations. Okay. Mm, the second comes from, <clears throat> is a derivative of the first property. This means, this just says, the second just says that the difference in the length of two sides has to be less than the third side. Okay, so this is rather rarely used, but still uh, rarely used on GI, but still good to know. So again, the difference between any two sides, so I can pick, let's say, B and C. So difference between the two sides, and all, obviously it has to be a positive difference. We always talk about positive differences here. The difference between the two sides has to be less than the third side. Okay. I'm not going to write this in words, but, but you get the, I, I, I hope you get the hang of it. The third property is related to what we call exterior angles. Okay. So for this, let me draw, redraw the triangle. So first of all, we need to know what is an exterior angle. So let's say I extend this side B further, okay? Then this angle that's formed here, <clears throat> let's say it's angle X. This angle X is known as an exterior angle. As the word exterior suggests, it's outside the triangle. Now there's a law which says that or it's a pretty uh, easy proof to show that your angle X is equal to the sum of angle A and B. Okay. Um, in words, this basically tells you that uh, in any triangle, an exterior angle, so okay, angle A is here and angle B is here, just to Clarify. Uh, an exterior angle is equal to the sum of to the sum of the two opposite interior. Angles. Okay. See, it says opposite and interior. So, uh, interior angles in a triangle 
are a b and c all right so so you want the opposite of x so you don't want c so we don't take c we just take a and b and x is equal to sum of a and b similarly i can also have there i can have other exterior angles so let's say if i extend this line this way this way further okay so now i have an exterior angle here let's say this is y so here my angle y would be equal to the other two opposite interior angles so this in this case it would be angle b and angle c which is here so angle b and angle c similarly i can extend this side up okay and have angle z here z so angle z would be equal to sum of angle a and angle c okay simple exterior angles all right next property in any triangle first largest side is opposite to the largest angle okay the simple law so let's say if I have a triangle and I'm going to draw it at an obtuse angle triangle on purpose so here is my obtuse angle which has to be the greatest <coughs> in, in measure so here are my sides so I know angle A is the largest right it's the obtuse angle the other two angles would be acute right it's the largest so that means A is the largest side so angle A is the largest angle and A is the largest side in the triangle Okay, again, this is uh, very easy prop, easy to uh, remember properties which are very commonly tested in the GRE. So, so do memorize these all. Okay, a similar um, property is that the shortest side is opposite to the shortest angle. Okay. So again, okay, simple, shorter side, shorter angle, uh, larger side, larger angle. So, so angle sides, they go in the same, the, the, the relationship between them uh, follows each other's uh, relative measures and angles. Okay, and last property is, is what we actually have already uh, looked at before, is that if you have a triangle and two sides are equal, So, so let's say you have a triangle A, B, C. I have my lens. Oops, let's say A, C, and B. Then if my if the two lengths are equal, let's say this A and B are equal. So A is equal to B. Then angle A and angle B are also equal. So what this says is basically if if two sides are equal then the angles opposite this is my shortened for opposite OPP dot so the angles opposite to the sides are also equal are also equal okay so, so in this case we have if a equals b the angles opposite are angle a which is opposite to side a and angle b which is opposite to side b so if a and b are equal then angle a and angle b are also equal okay. so this was a quick overview of um, the general properties of triangles that are commonly tested on on the gri next we'll look at some of the problems based on these concepts okay let me zoom this So the first question we have two sides of a triangle are four and eight 
Okay, I have two sides which are 4 and 8. Which of the following is the possible length of the third side of the triangle? Okay, so I need to find what are the possible values of the third side. And it says indicate all possible values. Okay, this is a question uh, you should all remember that when they say all, you, can, you have to select all possible answers, not just one. Though it can be one. Okay, so we know that the third side cannot be greater than the sum of the two other sides. The sum of the other two sides is 12, right? So your third side has to be less than 12. So I can take out anything that's greater than 12 so, or equal to 12. So, so this will go out. And then the other property we know is that the difference in the two sides, so 8 minus 4 being 4, your side has to be greater than this difference. So greater than 4. So, so 3 is out, 4 is out. So the answer choice is that will work, are 5, 6, 7, and 8. Okay. So simple, uh, simple application of triangle inequality property. All right, let's look at the next one. Given four rods of length one meter, okay, one meter, three meter, five meter, and seven meters. So how many different triangles can be made using one rod for each side? Okay, so you want you have these rods and you want to make triangle out of these, and you're using one one rod for each side. Uh, okay, so how about I pick the first three, so one, three, and five. Can I make a triangle of these of sides which lengths are one, three, and five? Let's test it. So if I add one and three, I get four. And well, four is less than the third side. Four is less than five, right? So this triangle is not possible. You can't have a side that's bigger in length, larger in length, then the sum of the other two sides. So 1 plus 3 gives me 4 and 5. The third side is longer than it. So this triangle is not possible. What about 3, 5, and 7? Okay, so 3 and 5 gives me 8, and 8 is greater than 7. So this one seems possible. Uh, so now you, you'll see if as the combination that I can pick is 1, 5, and 7. Okay, this again won't be possible. So any side, any triangle which has one in the combination would not be possible. So one, take it out. So the, the only combination that works is actually this one, three, five, seven. So only one triangle is possible. <coughs> okay, right. So the last question. So here we have a triangle. Uh, it's a quantitative comparison question. Quantity A, PR. So this, when they say PR like this, they mean the this length length from p to r point p to point r qr is this length okay qr pr um all right so this is this goes with angles and sides so so this angle would be 65 and 45 so all the angles sum up to 180 so i'm trying to find angle p <coughs> And the other two angles are equal to 65 and 45. Okay, so if you do this math, angle P would come out to be 70. So this is 70 degrees. So 70 degrees is the largest angle in the triangle. It means the side opposite to it has to be the largest. So QR is the largest side and it has to be greater than PR. So the correct answer is B.